out. Saturday morning, Saturday morning, and uh, guess what happens when you run on a Saturday morning with a crew full of about 12 or so? Well, let's see, I don't think there's 12 of us. I think there's this two in the Marine Johnson, two in the Optimizer, one in the Wood Mother, that's five. Nine or ten, right, Bobby? Ten. On thick stock, you need ten people. Well, you got ten people coming on Saturday that's been working all week. Guess what happens on Saturday morning? Uh, a bunch of them don't show. So basically, I come into uh, what well, my job was supposed to be today was get the lumber bunks ready to use. The the revision B, aka I guess we call it lucky, like that dog you're gonna modify on and missing the legs and teeth and stuff. Everything answers to lucky. Well, that's basically what Provision B is. That thing's going to look like the Frankenstein lumber bunk we get done with it. Because uh, I have had to modify so many things on it. Oh, my goodness. And uh, if you're watching and you don't want to listen to me ratchet, y'all, uh, about four minutes in, I get the good uh, Tater Fonda screwing. Uh, everything coming from everywhere. And then at eight minutes in, we have a uh, severe sweatshirt malfunction so uh if you just want to get the highlights of this video just skip along to that <laughs> if not i'm gonna yak and be boring a while but uh we got the uh lumber bunk done so much stuff it's it's way and <clears throat> if you're an actual meal out there thinking about things wow it turned out expensive i had got my butt busted for it it's uh it wasn't five thousand dollars but it wasn't four thousand either that's all i'm gonna say so we're gonna to have to do I figured a window for the lumber bunk at about three grand. For what it's gonna do for the company, three grand's a bunk. And uh, never and the maintenance cost has the maintenance the ongoing maintenance of the bunk itself has to be nothing. So <clears throat> missed the mark there too. So basically we're learning a lot on the uh, bunk and I'm going over the other side to do, do short stuff. I just kind of chuck short stuff over there narrow and wide and uh, there's two different length separations on the three and a half, three and three quarters. Then I run over there and do them when they build up. Anyways, on a lumber bunk here comes the, here she comes boys, here comes the fun. Uh, but anyways, uh, on the bunks, I got it figured in three grand. Uh, between three and thirty-five hundred, labor and all, is okay for what we're asking out of them. And uh, that's not a quick, quick turnaround, but it's not a slow turnaround either. I'm figuring a two-year payoff, max. Uh, but I missed the mark on that. Pretty good. Uh, the pipe outside the building stuff works good. That, that, that's, that's that's all that stuff's going to be okay. Uh, but there has got to be some modification, some severe modification of this project to get it right. Uh, so, 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 uh, we're back to the drawing board. We're at home. I'm home right now while I'm editing this video on one computer. On a computer sitting right beside me, I'm drafting on another. And uh, with the new AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, anybody out there drawing looking for a CAD program, I use... Autodesk uh, AutoCAD LT and uh, CAD Light LT. That's what it is, CAD Light LT. And our AutoCAD, no, it's AutoCAD Light. Anyways, good. Well, I tried to load the Turbo CAD and I about, I about ended up sleeping in the doghouse over that. Mommy about choked me over that. So I would say use that if you're going to do any drawing stuff to modify your company stuff. Or, uh, for a sawmill, CAD LT is where it's at, I think. Here comes the fun. But uh, 
Uh, I'm skipping all around. I, I'm really, the lumber bunks on mine big time. But uh, we're getting a price down there, and, and it looks now, after drawing this up, go, switching to the barn door from the uh, overhead triaxle duct style door, we're, I was going to try to make the barn door work like a Tiger Cat door. You know, Tiger Cat on their skitters, they got the door open without a shock because of door shape and hinge placement. You know how Tiger Cat does him out there, any loggers out there. I like that. That works good, but you know, I can't quite do it on a barn door opening on these lumber bunks, I don't think. So I'm going to have to actually bite the nail and buy a spring. And a spring, I think, is a two inch outside diameter, quarter inch, a uh, little less than quarter inch gauge uh, on the uh, spring wire itself. And eight inches long. And I'm, gonna, I'm getting them in. And I'm going to mount them up top. And then there I am pushing this bundle out. Now, all this stuff that you're looking at, I did build all this stuff. Uh, back when I was like less than 20 and uh, for my uh, the guy I was working under uh, John Spencer he, he, he I worked under him at the time and, and I built all this stuff back when I was a kid out of school so anybody there's a lot of people ask me you know where'd you get your fabricated experience shit I've done this stuff since I was a kid you know not good made a lot of mistakes you know did a lot I was aggravating but at this point in my life now it's all starting to pay off a little bit Thank goodness, because I blow down how much a big mama's money trying to learn. Uh, but all the stuff you're looking at, uh, and a lot of the stuff you're looking at, the frame size and stuff that I'm using on lumber bunks actually come from this stuff you're seeing right here, which come out of the Louisville, Kentucky Ford plant. The F-150 cabs all through the 90s. Every cab on an F-150 Ford pickup in the 90s rode down this equipment you're seeing me stack on. Of course, I modified it to where you stack pallet stock on it, but every every cab on an F-150 Ford pickup, all the way up to 350, I believe, come down this line that you're looking at. On on the left of the screen, that's where the Ford pickup cabs roll down. So we bought all that stuff and uh, modified it into conveyors. We bought all of it when they ripped the the 90s model. I think what did, what did Ford change in the 90, late 90s? And when it changed, they had to undo that line. So we bought the line, basically. All the dead rolls and stuff. So that's basically what we built our pallet operation off of. The stack, there, there goes the sweatshirt malfunction. I, uh, yeah, about, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up for oxygen. But anyways, that, that, so that, but, but a lot of them, a lot of that is a lot of the lumber bunks and everything. But that 42 inch inside diameter, 42 inch inside dimension, that's all coming from this stuff, which happens to be what a pack of lumber is dimension wise. Anyway, it's 42 inches wide, so everything just all the stars lined up, and that's what this is all based off of. But uh, trimming costs everywhere, and I'll do another budget on where I know this ain't logger weight logger stuff, but I mean, it's 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 my life, and right now that's what we're going through, so that's what I'm sharing. So uh, a lot of you ain't gonna like this stuff, but some of you will. We'll get back to logging. Those of you don't like watching these boring bitches, we will get back to logging. But this fabricating stuff, I tell you what, it is just, to me, it's like cutting timber. It's just, and stacking, I mean, all this stuff's fun. I don't know, there's a guy come on here the other day, he said, uh, made a comment about, you know, he couldn't see how people could do this and stuff. I was like, dude, have you ever done it? It is so fun. This is awesome. At the end of the day, you're ready to go. You're you you feel like you've done some work. You know what I mean. And and all day long, it's a numbers game. Like this ain't a brain dead job. All day long, this is hopping. You know. So I don't see the boringness in it like a lot of people sees. But whatever. But anyways, thanks guys. Later on.